The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. What's up, everybody? It's the week of October 26, 2020. My name is Taylor Cooper. This is Might Be Sports. With me, as always, Kevin Reeby. What's going on, Reeby? How you doing? All right, all right, all right. CJ, I haven't heard from CJ. If he joins in, I'll put him on. I'll put him on. But uh, Was that like a Freudian slip kind of thing? Because like Matthew McConaughey's been all over the news lately. You're all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Have you noticed that? Like he's what is he promoting? He's gonna be promoting something. I don't know, but you're right. I have I feel like I have seen him on TV more. I don't know. I don't know what he's promoting, if anything. He was just on, on Rogan. Um he's doing he, I don't know. Maybe I know he likes to talk about like maybe he's, I think he's got a new podcast. That must be what it is, but I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you're right. I have to check it out, but I don't know. What's going on with you, man? Mm. Just drink them. <laughs> it's Tuesday. That's right. Wednesday for you listeners out there. Like, think about this. I'm not a crazy person. I'm not going to drink on a Wednesday like some degenerate. <laughs> it's Tuesday where we are right now. Tuesdays are are, are all okay. good. Yeah, I had I had leg surgery today. Ooh. And they didn't say I couldn't drink afterward. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. <laughs> this is I, my pain reliever of choice. I trust this. I don't know what's in ibuprofen. <laughs> right. I assume it all went well. It did. Good. 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 I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Are you watching uh, game six of the World Series tonight? As we record, it's uh, on Tuesday night, game six. Um, yeah, I'll pop in and out. You know what? You know, it's sad. I have to admit. Most likely I'll have it like on my phone mm-hmm. while on the main TV, The Bachelor. Or the bachelorette. The bachelorette. <laughs> it's not my thing, but um, my fiance enjoys the show. Yeah, and I, she allows me. This is big. This is very, very big. She allows me to make fun of it as I watch it. Oh, it wouldn't work otherwise. Otherwise, I, right? I'm not one of those guys. Like I'll admit that I watch Survivor. I like a lot of shows on HGTV. It's not like you know, uh, Phenomenon is my favorite movie of all time. Mm-hmm. Great story i have no problem admitting that i like quote-unquote chick flicks and shows of that nature but when it's so dumb like the bachelor or the bachelorette i have to have the ability to make fun of it as it goes along and it's so easy to make fun of first of all not to like we're totally going off on a ta- tangent here but if survivor sports this is kind of sports too how is the show still on the air dude it's, i don't know it's been it's so um, everything this culture is supposed to be right right dude i've been like saying that for like the past couple years i'm like dude this shit is so like i'm doing air quotes so controversial and just like what are we promoting (laughs) we i've said for years the biggest white privilege whatever privilege whatever the highest privilege you can have is pretty privilege if you're a hot person that's the best you can be it's, there's nothing better than that. <laughs> Literally. Right. I think the hierarchy goes, you know, hot chick and then like whatever you want to put like, you know, classes and rich and races and all that. It starts with hot chick. Very top. Very top. Everybody else is below. Yeah. You can get away. Now, you know, I'm, I'm getting controver- controversial here, but the flip side of that coin is it's kind of like the Cinderella story. There's a point, you know, there's there's an end to that hot chick uh, thing, you know, us as dudes. And I think, you know, I've I've noticed on your behalf, and you may have noticed on mine, we get better with age. It's true. Women, you know, there's a point where uh, it starts to go the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how the show's on, and it like flip flops from Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor. Is that do they? Is it like every other season? I don't even know because I stop paying. I don't pay attention. I think so. I've never watched a full season. It's like back and forth, right? It's like girl guy, girl guy. I believe so. Just so like it's year it was like the first season I watched. I watched like half the episodes, and that was the most I have ever seen. That was the first season I have ever seen any episodes. It's just so it's like an even amount of like people getting smashed. Like it's just like 
One season it's a girl banging a bunch of dudes, and the next season it's a dude banging a bunch of girls. It's like, you know. Yeah, it's just it's so strange because they're obviously all there for exposure and to be on TV for as long as possible. All right. But they feel like they play off like they're in love from day one. And I can kind of understand that from like the male perspective. Like that's just how we're kind of wired for the most part. Like we can fall in love from day one. Mm-hmm. We're animals. We're just animals. Animals, right, right. Um, when the bachelor's on and like women are playing that role where it's like they're like, like these 40 women or whatever are in love with this dude at first sight. It's like, I mean, I don't believe it. It's <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, there, is, there is really something. I mean, everybody's different, but there is something too. you know, women actually um, aren't scumbags and they care about like the things that matter. Right. As opposed to us. <laughs> right, <laughs> as opposed in to us. General, <laughs> generally speaking, for our kind. Right. Well, real quick, do you uh, who do you think's winning the 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 World Series game tonight? Do you think the Dodgers win it? Do you think uh, it goes to a game seven? Well, I think it goes to a game seven just on paper. I didn't look at the gambling spread. Maybe that's something I'll look up now. But um, just. Looking at the matchup, um, the Dodgers have this guy, Tony Gonsolin. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name properly. Um, I didn't watch enough baseball this season, uh, this short season, to get all the names right, so I apologize if I screwed that up. But really good regular season for what it's worth. Um, You know, he only started, I think, eight or nine games. But – uh, like an ERA in like the two five range, maybe below that two three something. Um, solid young pitcher, but he's a rookie, right? Season, he, he's a rookie, uh, isn't he? Second year, I believe. Okay. Um, but yeah, t- talented guy. He's pitched well his whole career. But it, I think if you add up both of his seasons, um, he's right around what would be a full season. So I think he's, he's which I think he's had like a two five ERA for that span of time, which is great. But um, the postseason, he's been awful. Uh, I don't have the stats in front of me. I should pull this stuff up. Show prep. Uh, <laughs> but I think he's given up something like eight runs in seven in- innings pitched total. And that's just not good. Right. So, um, you know, he's going up against, uh, drawn a blank. Um, well, the Rays game one starter. I don't know why I can't think of his damn name. Uh, Whatever, but uh, former Pittsburgh Pirate. Anyway, uh, the matchup is totally lopsided. I see the Rays taking this one. Um, you never know in baseball. You just you never ever know. Yeah. But um, for the sake of the game, I hope it goes seven games because I think it's really that, good for baseball. Um, does that mean Kershaw would pitch Game Seven? Oh my God! It seems that way. Ugh. It would be. I mean, I think that's must see TV. Yeah. We're still kind of tuned out a little bit, but you got game seven, you got LA, the Lakers just won. Um, you know, the the Dodgers haven't won in forever. There's just a a LA thing going on. And there's like emotions where, you know, LA is still locked down. They got wildfires and all that kind of stuff. So I think it would be cool. I wouldn't be rooting for them because I'm an asshole. And, I just I like to see the Dodgers fail, but I mean, who doesn't really? Um, I like I like the Rays. Nobody hates the Rays, so I'd be rooting for the Rays. But I also I guess I wouldn't be too sad if the Dodgers pulled it out. Yeah, they just they just seem like the National League version of the of the Yankees a little bit. So it's hard to root for them as hard. But um, either way. The, that kind of game where you don't have a strong rooting interest in game seven like that, it, it would just be interesting to watch. Yeah. It'll be it'll be fun to watch if it goes that way. I think it will. Um, when this airs, we'll know the answer. Mm-hmm. But I think <laughs> it's going to go seven games. Yeah. Which, by, by the way, I want to pat myself on the back. Um, I guess it was last week uh, when we did the episode and we were talking. Yeah, it was last week. Um, right before game one. And I said, like, my two key guys for the Dodgers were Kershaw and Bellinger. Kershaw pitched, like, six strong innings. Yep. And, and Bellinger got him on the board with a two-run home run early. Yeah. Yep. 
was right. Yeah. Yeah. You're a sports guy. And in my very rare, they, um, they offered like some free bet. I'm not a gambler. When there's a free bet, I'll take it. So I bet on the Dodgers and a Bellinger home run. So I made a little bit of money on that oh, game. Oh, nice. So that was fun. Nice. But yeah, so that's my prediction. It'll go seven. And I think if it goes seven, the Dodgers win. It's been a weird season. I haven't watched a single baseball game, postseason included. And that might change tonight. I might watch a little bit of the game. We'll see. We'll see. We'll I'll see. admit, like I'm the baseball guy, and I thought games were hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah, without it, the crowd, it's just a little different. Like they baseball's really it, fucking boring this year. Bad. And it's just it's that and the Phillies were terrible. Joke. It's such a cruel joke that football doesn't miss a goddamn beat with no fans. It really doesn't. On TV, it really doesn't. I mean, you we talked about this before, mm-hmm. but I just it blows me away. Even with the few fans in the stands now, like who cares? Yeah that you don't realize that really the camera never really shows the stance. Yeah. It's on the field of play and that's it. Right. So you're not missing anything. So it's just, it's a cruel joke for the rest of sports because football already has everything going for it. Number one sport in America. They didn't have to really shut down anything except for physical, you know, fan, attendance and you know all these other leagues are having to make these concessions and football just rolls along and oh by the way doesn't miss a beat on television just as good <laughs> it just sucks for the rest of the sports i mean it, it does. really does yeah, yeah it does I'm, I'm i'm glad because every it, every sunday feels like a sunday and that's what i was really hoping to have what i really needed yeah. um so i'm glad that that's how it turned out um, it's been uh, it's been a crazy season so far. You can add um, OBJ to the um, star players in the league that's out for the season as well. He uh, blew his leg up, I think, uh, ACL, I think, again. Um, so, you know, hopefully he can recover and whatever, but he's done for the year already. And uh, it's, a, it's, you know, you're seeing a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries, a lot of, play, a lot of teams playing with, like, you know, Backup, backup, offense, offensive lines, uh, no-name receivers like in Philly, um, which Deshaun Jackson is back on um, the injured list again uh, after just coming back. Could, I don't know who could have seen that happening. Um, it's It's been really interesting. There, through through um, week uh, – through, through this week, there's only one undefeated team left. And that is the Pittsburgh Steelers at six and zero. Um, I have ESPN's power rankings here. I'll just go through some of them. Pittsburgh Steelers, obviously number one. Kansas City Chiefs at six and one are number two. Uh, That's, by, by the way, everybody knows the Chiefs are the best team in football. But all right, right. I, you know, not according to the record. Seattle Seahawks five and one. Uh, they're they're number three. Number four, the Ravens five and one. Five, uh, Green Bay Packers five and one. Tennessee Titans five and one, very surprising uh, to me anyway. Tampa Bay five and two, uh, number seven, number eight Buffalo Bills, number nine New Orleans Saints, ten L.A. Rams, eleven Arizona Cardinals, twelve the Chicago Bears, thirteen Indianapolis Colts, fourteen Cleveland Browns, fifteen San Francisco Forty Nine ers. Uh, and on and on. I don't even know where the Eagles are. Let's just scroll down. You know what's funny about that? That I never would have thought in the on and on section would be the new England Patriots. Yeah. They are ranked, uh, number 18 at two and four, which I'm very disappointed about. Uh, As most of our listeners know, I am not a Patriots fan, nor am I a Tom Brady fan, especially, but, uh, I was really hoping this season, the Patriots would just blow people out without Tom Brady so that the world could see that Tom Brady uh, is nothing without Bill Belichick. And quite honestly, it looks like the opposite. However, I will say this, that um, I don't know if I could have picked a worse quarterback to pick Tom Brady than Cam Newton. Um, I also I also am um, mildly blown away by the all-star team that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster. 
Um, it like f- literally could be the NFC Pro Bowl team um, if, <laughs> if the NFL was feeling lazy, especially now they just signed uh, Antonio Brown uh, and this and that. So it's just kind of like I, I don't know if I can make that judgment on whether or not Bilicek is nothing without Tom Brady. However, I can say with pretty decent certainty that Tom Brady is still Tom Brady and isn't quite as bad as I thought he was or want you to think that he is. <laughs> you, the listeners, not Kevin Reevy. Kevin Reevy knows what he's talking about. I apparently do not. But, um, yeah, they're they're ranked 18 at 2-4 and four, uh, real quick. The Philadelphia Eagles are two, number 21 at 2-4-1. and one. Uh, Cam Newton, speaking of Cam Newton, was benched this past week uh, for just – sucking at his job yeah um it's bad it's bad and and they're saying like that it's a historical start for for bill belichick like no bill belichick team has ever like certainly the patriots uh they have not started this bad uh pretty much in his career certainly with tom brady at the helm but um it's a mess it's a mess for new england the team that i think is in the worst shape right now is the dallas cowboys um, obviously besides like the shitty New York Jets or somebody like that. But the Dallas Cowboys really seem like they're in trouble. Andy Dalton uh, got hurt over the weekend. Um, their defense is historically bad, like historically the worst defense in the history of the NFL, which is crazy to me. Um, other than that, like I wasn't really picturing the the Steelers being the last remaining undefeated team. But I feel like I'm I'm usually surprised by who's left. You know, like every now and then you get like a Buffalo who's like undefeated for a while or like a Miami that's undefeated for a while or like, you know what I mean? Uh, so I was kind of surprised that Pittsburgh is doing as well as they are. But I also know that they've cut some of their like toxic players in the past couple of years like Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Um, You know, it seems like they're, they're, they're doing the right thing. I just... I'm really surprised with the Titans. I'm really surprised with the Seahawks. Like I'm surprised, I'm not surprised that they're good. I'm just surprised that they're as good as they are. Um, yeah, I think you're seeing teams. It was the big talking point. I guess two big talking points before the season started was um, new coaches. They're going to have a lot of ground to make up. Um, with the COVID-19 shutdown and all that, it's going to be very difficult for them to create. Um, I mean, just your first year with a team anyway is going to be rough. But if you are under these kind of restrictions and football is the ultimate team game, you're going to have a hard time. You look at the Cowboys, what they're going through right now, and I think it's solely based on having a new coach. The Giants are really struggling. They have no identity at all whatsoever. Yeah. It's just I think we're seeing now that stability at the head coaching position. If you've got stability at the top and a quarterback that can execute, then pretty much you're golden. You're good to go. That's why you're looking at Seattle, you got Pittsburgh, um, Tampa Bay is in good shape. Uh, if you got the coach, you got the quarterback, you're fine. So, you know, you're seeing in spots where that isn't so much the case, teams are struggling. Um, I think the, the Browns have the recipe to be successful, but coaching's a little shaky. Their quarterback's a mess. It just can't come together, not in this kind of season. And maybe you could make up for that kind of stuff with a normal offseason, but not now. So, more than ever, I think that's the Cowboys' problem. They just didn't have enough time to put things together. And I think that maybe points to a positive sign for the Eagles. Because unless the Redskins pull off something r- ridiculous and remarkable, and for them to go on a run would be against everything I just said, which is also totally possible because I'm sometimes just totally wrong. But for them to pull something off and pull out this division would be weird, to say the least. 
I think, you know, their win last week with Kyle Allen and you no, know, they're all hyped up. But remember, you know, Nick Foles made that speech last week after winning, you know, you, you want to run through a brick wall for the guy and then they get trounced by the Rams last night. And it comes down to quarterback play. So I think that the, the, the Redskins don't make sense to win the division. Cowboys, all their problems, they don't make sense to win the division. It's got to be the Eagles. Yeah, they have Carson Wentz, they got Doug Peterson. If the formula rings true, they should have an edge. Now we'll see how it plays out. They got some rough matchups coming up. They got some tough, tough games. They got to play the Packers. They got the Saints. Yeah. They have uh, shoot. Um, they got a few more touch tough matchups. It's just it's not going to be an easy road. But hey, if you can win the damn thing with seven wins, maybe even six wins, screw it. Just get into the playoffs. See get what, rolling. See what happens. Try to get healthy. Yeah. But it, you never know. Just get into the into the playoffs. And I don't even know what the playoffs are going to look like this year. Yeah. I didn't look at like what the playoff tree is going to be with these extra teams and how that's going to work. But you know, like, like I said last week, the, the Eagles passed on Justin Jefferson and took Jalen Rager when everybody had Justin Jefferson going to the Eagles and they pulled a wild card and screwed it all up. Justin Je- Jefferson is a star right now. He's looking like an absolute star. So if you can't draft, you just got to win. You got to win in the now. Yeah. For the draft. Just forget it. Yeah. So I think the Eagles have a shot. They have a shot as much as anybody else, especially if stars are going down left and right. I think Lamar Jackson, and I say this every year, Lamar Jackson's going down. <laughs> it's a hot I take. That, I think there's a chance he's already kind of hurt, and there's been you know r- rumors about that. I don't know if he showed up on an injury report. Sometimes guys just show up on an injury report no, no, no matter what. Like they got like a bruised knee or whatever. They're just on it all year long. Yeah. But um, I think Jackson, there's a chance he, he could be hurt. They just don't, they don't look at all the same as they did last year when they were just steamrolling, scoring tons of points. So, I mean, every team has a weakness. You know, Ben Roethlisberger, his team's undefeated. Well, he went down midseason last year. Their season was tanked. So, we'll see. Yeah. With anybody. Yeah, as far as the Eagles go, I mean, it's pretty easy to see that they can win the division, even though they're trash. I sound like a total homer, and that's totally true. I'm more speaking to – I wouldn't bet on the Eagles, but I'm just saying I see a path there. Right. Well, no, I, I see a path there. I mean, it's it's pretty – I mean, the Washington football team – is the 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 only one that I I would worry about in the division. And the Giants like you said zero identity especially without Saquon Barkley. Um the Cowboys are historically bad on defense. Zeke hasn't been able to get it going and I don't even know who their quarterback is. So you know, it's got to be the Eagles. But what the Eagles need to do there's still obviously room for improvement, and I don't know everything that they need to do, but I do know one thing is for absolute certain. It is boring to watch Doug Peterson call football games these days, in my opinion. Uh, his first and second season with the team, I feel like he was adventurous. I feel like there was more creativity in the playbook. So some of that might have been Frank Wright, obviously. Uh, but I do believe that Doug P, you know, kind of built himself a reputation in Philly of having huge balls and just going for it, right? And like, I just don't get that vibe off of Doug P right now, and I don't, I don't know why. Well, creative is a funny word. Um, creative, you really only use creative when it's successful. You you know what I mean? Like a Banksy painting is creative, but also so is, you know, drawing uh, a nice painting with your own shit on the wall, but it's not going to smell very good. Right. Kind of fucked up. It's like, what the hell? I mean, dude, that's 
A spinning <laughs> image. That's a really good self-portrait, but it's shit. All right. Also creative. Also creative. So I think we use creative when it's successful. So he's just he just hasn't been successful. He's trying to be creative and trying to be daring, but you know, it's daring when it works, it's reckless when it doesn't. So it's just he it's not working as well. Um him choosing to settle for the tie was I think a decision that most people thought was more reckless than daring. Um, there were uh, his, uh, what was it? Game four, or whatever it was when he chose to uh, against the, uh, the Ravens, the uh, Steelers, when he chose to kick from 54 yards, whatever it yes. was. Yeah. Instead of going for it. Uh, again, you you don't get the fucking tie against the Bengals. Not going for the win in overtime to or, or to kick that field goal, absolute trash, absolute trash. Give me a fucking break, Doug P. Stop being a pussy in 2020. Everything's going wrong everywhere, Doug P. I need Doug that. P. to figure this shit out. I understand that he's playing with backup, 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 backup wide receivers. I understand that nobody on the offensive line except for the center has played a single game in their fucking life. I understand that nobody even knows if Carson Wentz is a good quarterback or not. But what I need to see is a fucking... I need Doug P. to be the glue that holds his team together. I need that that same next guy up mentality that they won that they won a, a Super Bowl with. They they are legitimately the underdogs now. Start playing like it. Start playing like you were then because it's the same fucking thing. You're playing with nobodies. But here's the irony. You're right in the moment and you might be right now. But if you look at it, that tie is pretty advantageous. It's the reason why the, the Eagles are in first place right now. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Field. Yeah. And it's the reason why they don't need a tiebreaker. Right. I, I, ironically, the tie takes them out of a tie. So there's no, if, if they were in a tie with the Redskins right now, you'd be looking at the schedule and you'd be saying, all right, we need to beat the Redskins next time. Or if we're tied, forget about it because they'll have the edge. They'll have two wins over us. Um, you're, you're looking at in the division win loss. It's the same thing the Eagles dealt with last year where they had to beat the Cowboys the second to last game of the season. So I think if you look at it right now, if you had to make that choice, if you had using hindsight and going back, I think you'd maybe go for the tie too. So, but these things change. Hindsight will change in two weeks. So we'll see if, uh, What's what? And you you can you never know also. I mean, I'm a big believer in, um, you know, one little thing can change everything. You look at, um, you know, Elliott's kick against the Giants when they won uh, the Super Bowl that, that season, his 62-yard kick. If he misses that, they maybe don't win the Super Bowl. Right. So we're talking a matter of feet, maybe this much is the difference of them winning the Super Bowl and not. It's like, you know, when Al Pacino says, football is a game of inches. Yeah. The inches we need are all around us. All around us. So it's true. And, you know, despite me saying in hindsight, going for the tie is good. What if going for the win and getting the win gets them on a little bit of a roll? And not, not a roll where they win every game that, then on. What if it's enough of a roll where, you know, it gives them a little bit of oomph to beat the Ravens, to beat the Steelers, to, you know, yep. maybe it means something going forward propels them in some way. Maybe they could win the, the division by a fucking landslide instead of squeaking it out in the end of the season like they always do. Right. I, I'm, I just haven't seen anything really impressive. And 21 in the power ranking sounds about right. It's yeah. just, ugh. You know what I mean? Speaking of Dallas, real quick before we do get, go to the week, they're rated 25th. That's trash. Here's go to the week. Fight Me Sports presents the greatest of all time.
of the week. Greatest of all time of the week. Sponsored by Unomia CBD. Go to unomiacbd.com. Use promo code MBN. Get 20% off free shipping and free shit. Uh, clear cut for me this week, Kevin Reavy. It's clear cut. We never, ever, ever, ever talk about this sport on our show. <laughs> I never watch it. I don't know anything about it. But somebody broke a record this past week, and I got to talk about it because this is might be sports. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, F1 racer, won his 92nd Grand Prix, which is the new record. Uh, it was previously ha- uh, held by Michael Schumacher. Uh, he has 91 wins. Uh, The next guy behind them only has 53. So this guy, Lewis Hamilton, uh, spectacular race car driver, drives for Mercedes. Um, I watched some highlights of his um, just kind of once I I saw the news flash that that he broke a record. I was like, well, I knew who this guy was because he's he's also kind of an activist. So I, I, you know, I've seen him before. I've heard of him before. Um, but I, I kind of looked into him. This guy's crazy good. It's uh, pretty impressive stuff. 92 wins. He has, um, I think it's uh, he's, he's gotten the pole position 97 times in his career. That's insanity. That's like just being, like, like, I don't know how many, I don't know anything about F1, so I don't know how many races are in a season. Like, I don't know how many seasons this guy has been just, like, straight up killing it, but... It's got to be a lot, and he's the the greatest F one driver in the history of the sport as of right now. So, shout out to Lewis Hamilton, clear cut go to the week. What do you got? Yeah, I don't know. From the little I do know, and I'm way out of my depth here. I think there's a lot to do with money in that regard too. You have to have a ton of talent, but the money involved in this sport is oh my serious God. yeah it's big time oh well because they serious. get a lot of money too like if you're it's winning you get some money. Sport. it's like it's we don't as americans we don't understand how big auto racing is internationally how big tennis is i believe tennis i could be wrong i think tennis is the most gambled on sport in the world it wouldn't surprise me i could be wrong but that's because it's everywhere there's I've there's tennis, tennis players huge. everywhere yeah so, um, yeah, so my go to the week, um, as much as I'd love to go baseball, you know, we got the World Series. It might be ending tonight. Um, I just – just because it's kind of wild. Justin Herbert, the season he's having with the Chargers, is just kind of mind-blowing. Uh, so, so far, let me look at the stats here. He's completing – I mean, this is this is a guy – Coming out behind Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow broke every record there was in college football, and Justin Herbert was the other guy, the other guy in every every respect. Nobody had Justin Herbert in it. So it's this is kind of a situation that Aaron Rodgers had, except you know Herbert was taken a lot earlier. He's just blowing away the competition. I mean, he's just absolutely killing it. He's um, completing sixty seven. 0.4% 0.4% of his passes. He's got 12 touchdowns to three interceptions. The last three weeks, he's thrown three t- touchdowns, four touchdowns, three touchdowns, averaging over 300 yards passing per game. I mean, he's out dueling. Um, I mean, back to back weeks, he took on um, uh, Tom Brady and Drew Brees. Mm-hmm. Now, he's not winning a ton, ton of games, but like it, it's not. The Chargers still just aren't very good. Right, right. It's not because of him. Right. They're in these games. I mean, you look at these games since he took over. They got a loss to Kansas City by three points, a loss to Carolina by five, a loss to T- Tampa Bay by seven, which, by, by the way, they lost 38 to 31. Um, to New Orleans, they lost by three. And then uh, they beat Jacksonville by 10. They scored 39 points. I mean, they're they're scoring points. It's like they're just waiting for something to click. You know what I mean? Like that's a team that's like on the verge. So he's yeah, he's one in five or one in yeah, one in four in his career mm-hmm. so far. But these games could have gone any like either way. Right. He, very impressive dude. And I, I kind of point to QB record, but in this case, the stats are so overwhelming and he's elevated the Chargers so much that this guy's an absolute star and 
you know, maybe it's hyperbole a little bit. It might be too early, but it just seems like, I mean, on paper, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league, like through these five games that he's played, he's just one of the best. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable what he's doing. And by the way, he runs the ball. Like he's an absolute stud in that respect too. Um, I can't, I don't have the numbers here, but uh, 66 yards uh, rushing last year. He's got the skills. He, yeah. He's an all around quarterback. He's going to be a star for years to come. Yeah, that's big. Nice job. Nice job, Reevy. Thank you for joining us on Might Be Sports. Reevy, you did a fantastic job tonight. Thank you for being with me, man. Hey, cheers. Hey, uh, go check out mbnnetwork.com. Go to mbnnetwork.com. It's never been easier for you to find your new favorite podcast. It's looking fantastic. Check out the shop. Go buy some shit. Also, go to patreon.com slash mbnnetwork for exclusive episodes and uh, free giveaway stuff. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out.